Welcome back, Rec Room Creators. This is Marisa. If you're looking to rotate a door and work with circuits in the hierarchy, you've came to the right tutorial. Before we can get started, you're gonna need your Maker Pen. You can find your Maker Pen in your backpack. Let's get started. Here are all the circuits you're gonna need. First, you're gonna need a rotator. This is used to rotate the door. Note, a rotator is a container, which we'll cover a bit later. Next, you're gonna need an interaction volume. When a player grabs the door, it will open the door. Next, we're gonna need a bool variable. This stores values in the chip for later use. For the door, we need to store whether it's open or closed. Next, we're gonna need a not chip. The not chip takes the bool input and returns the opposite state. Each interaction flips it, so if the door is open, which is true, it will close, which is false, and vice versa. Next, we're gonna need an if chip. This branches the extension based on the state of that value, if the door is open or if it is closed. Last, we're gonna need two rotator set rotation chips. This sets the rotator to a specific rotation. We have two of these, one for closed door at zero degrees and one for an open door at 90 degrees. You can find all of these circuits by searching for them in your palette. Here, before we start connecting all of these circuits, we need to place the rotator into the door container you see here. In rooms two, the rotator acts as a container and the object we want to rotate must be placed inside that rotator container. There are several ways you can connect the rotator container to the door container. First, you can use the connect tool to combine the two containers. Second, you can use the select options menu to relocate containers. Third, one of my personal favorites is using the hierarchy menu to rearrange the containers. Let's begin. First, let's connect the rotator to the container using the connect tool. We're gonna need to edit into the container to access the doors. Now the rotator's inside the door container. Next, we need both the front and back doors in the rotator container. We can move them using the hierarchy menu or the select tool. Let's start with the select tool. Let's open up our maker pen menu and select the select tool, then select the two doors here, and then select make child of target parent in the options menu here. All right, now let's select the item we want to be the parent of the door. In this case, it's the rotator. This means the door containers will become children of the rotator container. Bam, done. Now that we're inside the rotator container, let's edit out one level and attempt to rotate the rotator. Looks like the door is attached. This is because the door is in the rotator. Now let's check the hierarchy to see how this is set up. We have a parent container, Sandor tutorial. The child containers is the rotator for the Sandor tutorial, and there are two other child containers within the rotator. To enable rotation when the door is grabbed, we'll need an interaction volume that moves with the door. Therefore, the interaction volume must be placed inside the rotator container. Let's edit into the rotator and add an interaction volume. Open up your Maker Pen menu, go to the palette and search for interaction volume, like so. Then place it then we want to scale the volume, then fit, then make it fit nicely around the door, just like so. After getting the interaction volume fit a little bit better around the door, I'm going to move this interaction volume circuit board in a better location. Great, so we need the interaction volume to communicate with the rotator. We can connect the interaction volume port on use or hold completed to the out chip. This will pipe that to the rotator in the container out of this one. This port here is an execution. So when connecting the interaction volume circuit board from the on use or hold completed port to the target area, this will open up another port here, like so. Let's give this port a name by going to our configure tool and then selecting on the out port under target hit outputs over in this area. Let's name our new port to interaction volume, 
just to be more organized. You don't have to do this, but it helps a lot. Now you can see that we have our interaction volume board connected to the rotator output chip, which will pass the execution of the interaction volume out through the rotator's board. Let's back out of the rotator container and then now see that name on the rotator object board as well. Now we need to connect all our circuits, but we have those at the room level. We can either recreate them here in this container or use our copy paste tool to paste them in this container. Let's set it out and copy those circuits. Select these circuits and copy them. Edit back into the rotator container and paste those circuits like so. Before we start connecting these chips, let's quickly review how to think about them and how they communicate with each other. When information is triggered, such as when the door is interacted with, the circuits handle this first. Read old data inputs, top to bottom. Then do work. Then set old data outputs. Circuits always follow this order. Here, this is a circuit. This is an object board attached to an object, in this case, a rotator. Everything on the left side are inputs. Everything on the right side are outputs. First, there are chips with execution ports. Second, there are chips that don't have execution ports. Chips that have execution ports, we also call this ESEC for short. It will execute data when exit signal is received. And chips with exit ports always take in data from left to right. While chips that don't have execution will execute data when any output is read. Data is always read from right to left. Let's connect these using our connect tool. Wire up the interaction volume port here on the rotator object board to the execution port, also called ESIC, on the bool variable chip here. When the interaction volume is triggered, it passes an execution signal through this port. When it executes, the value of this bool variable is set to false because of the default value here, and that value is stored for later. In this case, we want the bool variable because we want to know if the door is opened or closed, but we need a way to flip that to false when the door is closed and true when the door is open. And that is where the not chip comes in. So let's connect the input port to the output port on the not chip results here and the input to the output on the bool variable chip here. So what happens when the trigger volume is grabbed by a player is that it sends data from the ESIC port on the rotator object board to the ESIC port on the chip. Then the bool variable performs its function. Therefore, it reads all data inputs top to bottom, then do work, then set all data outputs. In this case, the input port to the output port on the not chip. So the bool variable chip is reading the result and the not chip is reading data from right to left and that value flips true or false, which will then be ported to the output port where the bool variable exec that information to the if chip. The if chip runs an exec, elevates the bool input condition and branches the execution based on the state of that variable. If the condition is true, it runs then. If the condition is false, it runs else. So this is because we need to know the rotation of the door, whether it's open or closed. Now let's connect the then output exit to the input on the exit port on the rotator set rotation chip. Moving down, we're gonna see target, which is what we want to target. That is the rotator in this case. So let's connect the target port to the output port here on the rotator. Then the exit then reads target, the thing that we are targeting. In this case, where we want to rotate the rotator gadget to be set at and reads that information below. So let's change that to 90 degrees. Now let's connect the other rotator set rotation from else and leave this at zero degrees. So now that this is all set up, let's just quickly go over this. When the interaction volume is used, grabbed by a player, this flips the value of the bool variable. 
If it was true, make it false and vice versa. Then if the value of the bool variable is true, set the rotation of the rotator to 90 degrees. Otherwise, set the rotation of the rotator to zero degrees. Now that's all set up, let's give this a try. Ah, it works. If you would like to move the location of your rotator, there are several ways you can do that. First, by moving the pivot in the rotator container, like so. Or second, by moving objects outside of the rotator container. To do this, select the objects and drag them out of the rotator container. After moving the rotator, you can place the objects back inside. Be aware that moving circuits in the hierarchy may disconnect them, and you will need to reconnect them. In this case, you would need to reconnect the interactive volume. Now you know how to open and close the door and work with circuits in the hierarchy. I can't wait to see the amazing things you're going to create. Remember, be creative and give your rec room best. Now I have to go defeat the crab boss. See you guys.